All right, let's talk a little bit about the Hawaiian culture. And, you know, my my thing on this is without teaching history properly, you're allowing the means by which students, when they become adults, to reach conclusions that are feasible, which would be a messed up, I see, a messed up conclusion to draw in the future because they won't understand why things are the way they are and why things can't be fixed instantly because this generation they think things can be fixed instantly they don't understand that's why the facts and details matter so much to tell the truth whether it's good and bad about the history because it allows them to make feasible decisions of why this is happening and why it's not happening that's why you can't just have native americans native hawaiians Black Americans teach them because they were abused, beaten, and even killed for practicing their culture. So they don't know if they teach their kids this, if they're going to get in trouble or not. And they can't rely on the history books because the history books are correct. So somehow they need to learn the true history so they can grow up come up with their own conclusion of what happened so they understand why things are the way they are now now let's go to a little of the culture I'm sorry about Hawaii <clears throat> so the Hawaiians have always been a warm welcoming society a lot of traditions were added after the other islands like Tahiti, New Caledonia, Fiji, New Zealand, Puerto Rico, and Australia entered into marriage alliances and trading agreements with the Hawaiians. Only list of the islands that I have DNA relatives from. So until I can get DNA evidence from the rest of them, I can only list the ones that are uh, DNA connected. Now, Nudity was very prominent and was never seen as a sexual or shameful manner. Depending on the weather, some would either, someone would either put garments on or take garments off. Most sports were also performed naked, especially in the presence of royalty. Having wet clothes on in the presence of royalty was actually considered a crime and sometimes punishable by death. And also being naked, naked was a ceremonial condition of an appeal for forgiveness. If you came naked, it was a sign of respect. Now, coming of age of children, it was called a gen gentle preparation. The boys up to the age of six or seven, it was a daily blowing into <coughs> the penis to help loosen the skin to get it prepared from circumcision. And girls, up until the age of six or seven, breast milk was squirted into the vagina. And both of the boys and girls had their bottom shaped to help it become round and firm so the buttocks wouldn't become flat. And the children were taught that life was about pleasure and happiness and never guilt or shame. The guilt and shame started coming when the missionaries came. So let's talk about hula chanting and dancing in the luau's. Chanting was a way of life. It told a story and it helped with future generations of how things should be passed down to sustain the life. Especially in the wayfinding as they traveled to other islands, the chanting and the dancing luau showed them how <coughs> They would be guided on their way and also, sh you know, showed them how to rig and paddle the outrigger canoes, how to read the sky. It basically helped tell the story most of the time, how things are performed. And most of the time it was done in luau's. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, Leia's was used to beautify themselves and distinguish them from others. Now they're used as welcoming and celebrating an occasion. 
They were made of flowers, leaves, shells, nuts, feathers, bones, and teeth of various animals. It's rude to remove an alaya from your neck in the presence of the person who gave it to you. It's considered disrespectful. So we had surfing and kite flying. Before the islands took to wave finding, they took to the oceans for strength and protection. If you were able to catch a wave, you could go out on your voyage. If you could not, it was not time for you to go. Kite flying was used for fishing. An insect was tied on a string with a small sail and it would sit on top of the water so it could catch a fish. Kite flying was also used to ward off bad spirits. And you, you could tell how they were warded off based on the way the kite was flying. Then the warriors had to stay prepared for fighting, so they practiced a form of martial arts, which was a form of bone breaking, joint locks, throws, pressure point manipulation, strikes, weapons, and strategy. Now they just do a form of wrestling to prevent the extension of the art from going away. So it stays in the, the minds of uh, the Hawaiians. But they were, back in the day, they were only allowed to be practiced by the king's honor guards. Now, clothing. The men wore long cloth and the women wore skirts made out of grass and leaves. Um, when the missionaries came, they were wearing moo-moos and long gowns. Um, when the missionaries came, it was considered, uh, their traditions, their cultures, and what they did, it was considered heathenistic in most of the missionaries' mind. So, when they started writing the constitutions and the laws, the missionaries put it in there that they had to stop. They even had to stop their language. One missionary in particular Hiram Bingham noted that they were wasting their time in learning, practicing, and witnessing the hula because it was considered a heathen song and dance.